Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Ready, Set, Bet by John DeClaire, published by AEG. In the game Ready, Set, Bet, you are going to be playing a 2-9 player game, takes roughly 45 to 60 minutes, and is for ages 10 and up. And you're betting on a horse race. You are attempting to place your chips down onto this kind of, looks like a... A uh, craps table of sorts and you're going to be betting on horses to finish to place and or to uh, score the winning run uh, There are different ways in which you can bet along this track here and the horses are going to move based on a die roll This announcer is going to be rolling and constantly calling out where the horses are going to be going and how fast they're going and any bonus movements and once a horse Finishes past the red line that will stop or halt all bets and the horses will continue from there Even though people cannot bet anymore you'll watch the race finish and then you're going to count up your points based on the board here. After that, you'll deal out VIP cards to players, giving them more unique bets or money. You'll deal out prop bets that will change the bets for the horses and you'll take back everything you have and score as many points as possible. You'll go through this four times, meaning four different races, with the same announcer trying to score as many points as possible in the game. It's pretty simple, pretty straightforward, a big party game. Let's talk about how to set it up how to play, and my review. Well, when you begin this game, the first thing you want to do is determine if the announcer wants to play or not. The announcer can just be the announcer and kind of host the party, or they can play as well, utilizing these tokens here. If the announcer wants to play, give them these tokens. Everybody else is going to get a different set of colored chips with a two, three, three, four, and four five uh, number symbols on each of them. The black and white ones will be set aside. Take the main game board and place out in front of all players, as well as the race board and set that in front of every player. Place all of the cards in their spaces on the game board. You'll have exotic finish cards, shuffle them up and deal out one for the first race. Shuffle the VIP cards and place them on the VIP space. And then the prop bets, you'll shuffle these up and deal out five to begin with, and they're going to be rotating. Then go ahead and place all the horses, the two, three horse, the four, five, Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and eleven, twelve horse in their stables and the pins on the race board. Set aside the first, second, and third showing tokens that you'll be using at the end of each race, and then you're basically ready to begin. Everything else is just going to be a bunch of chips, which is going to have different, different denominations. These are not the exact chips from the game. I'm using my own personal poker chips, but you can use those or your own. It really is up to you, but it's pretty simple. And after that, you're ready to begin with the announcer. For each race phase, the announcer announcer is going to start and go three, two, one, go. And they're going to be rolling these die and moving horses. But if the announcer is playing, the first step of the game is to place down these green markers onto the board. And you can select them on any of the bet spaces that you want as the announcer. And your chips are worth more because you're not actually going to see how the horses are going to finish. Additionally, even though you bet on a specific space, everybody else is still able to bet on that space because normally when you bet on a space that locks the space up but not for the announcer the announcer has placed his bets and the announcer now has the die and now the game is ready to begin the announcer will start by rolling the die you'll roll the die check the total cumulative value of the die and move the horse that corresponds with the value so if i roll these dice i get a nine i will move the nine horse one space you'll do that for any horse that you roll these die on however if you roll the dice again and the same number from the previous roll pops up, you're going to move that horse one plus a bonus of whatever it says on the board. Green horses are going to go plus three. The orange ones are going to go plus two, red ones plus one, and then the seven horse, which is black, it will go plus zero. So they'll just go their base movement of one. So in this case with the nine, I move one for the first roll, one for the second roll, and then I'd add a bonus of two more spaces when rolling that nine. If you roll nine again, however, the bonus will not trigger. He'll simply move one space, but if you get it again, bam, one plus two more again. And that's how the movement is going to work. You roll the dice again, an eight, the eight will move up. Oh, I rolled it, two, the two is going to move up. Oh, bam, a 12, the 12 will move up. And so all the horses are gonna be moving throughout the game, and this is all simultaneous. And while this is happening, and before any horse reaches past this red line, everybody's going to be able to bet. And there's different betting locations on the board here. Uh, the first one, the most simple one, is going to be on the show, place, and win sections of the game board. And they're denoted by different colors. You're going to have the gold, the silver, and the bronze locations. Additionally, not only will you have the uh, win, place, and show, but you're also going to have the different horses on the other end. So think of it like a graph. If you want, the 
horse that is four to win the match, which is to get to the finish line first, you will bet on the row in the win column next to the uh, the five, if that's what you're going for, the four, if that's what you're going for. If you want it to place, which means first or second, then you will bet on this row in this specific column. And then showing is first, second, or third. So I could say as the green player, I want the, the, I want the red six to win. So I'm gonna bet on this corner here. It's three times the number I place, which is two, and all your different tokens have different numbers on them. I want the eight to place, so I'm gonna put this three on two, and I want the 10 horse to show. So I'll place this three on that three there. And that's how the whole board works. You cannot bet on a space that previously had a bet on it, whether it's yours or not. You can only have one chip on each space unless it was the announcer who bet there previously before rolling the dice. Other spaces to bet. Well, you can bet up on these top colored areas, red, orange, and blue wins. Only one bet can be on these spaces. Oh, and of course, seven finishes fifth or worse. You'll place your token and you'll multiply that by the value if you if you win. So I can kind of bet like roulette. So I think, oh, the red, one of the red horses will win. I'm gonna place this four there. You can also bet on prop bets. Prop bets are very specific as to which horse has to beat which other horse. It'll tell you the value and it'll say that the 2-3 horse has to be farther along than the 9 horse. And if this is possible, and this happens at the end of the game, you'll score the value. And you can bet on any one of these. Same rules apply, only one. Additionally, you can bet on the exotic finishes. Every race is gonna open up a new exotic finish, and these are actually gonna have multiple different spaces for different betters. So in this case here, the late start. At least two horses move three or fewer spaces, times four if you get the successful uh, win on this specific card. And those are all the different betting locations. It's pretty simple. The main is uh, winning, placing, and showing. Then you're gonna have the roulette type bets. You're gonna have the prop bets for specific horses and the show, which is gonna have multiple spaces for multiple different betters if they would like. And there's also one little last little unique thing about this game. Uh, you're gonna have negative spots on the board. If you bet on a space that has a negative spot and you lose that bet, you will lose that amount of currency after the race. So for instance, if I think for a fact that six is going to win and I bet on this times three area with a five, and five is actually the winner, not six, I will lose two bucks at the end of the race. So you can go uh, negative money, but you can never go past zero. So if you go negative in the first round, no big deal. And so after everybody has placed all their bets down into any of the different areas that they would like, uh, or uh, if one of these horses moves past the red line, bets are going to end for you or for everyone if it's the red line. In which case, you're just gonna watch the rest of the race. You'll watch the horses move past the red line and attempt to fi successfully finish. All the while, the announcer is constantly going, okay, we got a horse here, we got a seven, eight, eight, eight is going up one, eight is going up one, 11 horse moves up one, seven moves up again, now we got eight, nine, whatever. And so they're gonna be moving the horses, calling it out, trying to make it as exciting as possible as people placing down their bets, stopping at the red line and watching the finish. When horses finish, you're going to then place the markers here. First place goes to six, well done. The second place is fourth place. And then third place, oh look, it's a tie between eight and nine. And this will show the showing of the horses. So people can look at the board, tally up their scores, and everybody pulls everything off, and then you're ready to move on to the next round. So basically collect your winnings, if you got any, and then move on to the next round. How it works is all these come off, all of the prop bets will leave and new ones will pop up. A new exotic finish will pop off. And then every player is going to draw two VIP cards. These cards here are gonna either give you additional bonus bet tokens, or they're gonna give you unique custom cards that will either A, give you money, or B, give you money when certain things happen during the race, and so on and so forth. These cards, when you get two of them, you'll be able to choose one of them, discarding the other, and using the one that you picked the moment you get it. So VIP cards are gonna definitely help you throughout the game, and you're gonna be getting them on rounds two, three, and four. After that, all the horses go back to finish. The announcer will go ahead and bet once again if he's playing. Everybody else is gonna start once the dice get rolled and so on and so forth until the third and then fourth final race, in which case everyone will tally up all their points and whoever has the most is the winner of Ready, Set, Bet.
So let's discuss the game. Well, <laughs> my grandfather was a big horse racer, or horse better. He wasn't a racer. He never raced in his life. He liked to bet on horses. That was a big thing back in the day. You can still do it now. I remember his story once where he went to a horse race and he put money on a horse to win. And that horse won. And when he got home, he was very upset. And my grandmother asked him, why are you upset? And he said, because I bet money on a horse and it won, but I could have bet more. <laughs> Well, you don't have to worry about that in Ready, Set, Bet. This is going to be one of those fun, casual party games that you're playing with up to nine people. One of them is going to be the announcer slash the roller of the dice. Another nice thing about the game, too, is it's going to come with an application at some point, in which case you won't have to have an announcer. You can just actually watch the uh, application or your screen uh, say where the horses are going. It'll show what dice rolls are happening, when you can stop betting, when the horses reach or one of the horses reaches that red line, and it kind of does everything for you. You so that everybody can just simply take your bet chips out and place them down. You could play it with more than nine players if you want. You can actually just go ahead and make additional little tokens here as long as you have extra betting chips and tokens. There's no reason why I guess you couldn't do that. The board almost never gets filled even in a nine player game because people choose to hold on to their bets. They want to be careful as where they bet in the game and how much they place down and losing money is never a good thing. In this game, each round will give you an opportunity to win the game. Even if you score zero on the first race, you can still win the previous races and win the game. In fact, you can win the game in roughly one round if you get really lucky or have a good idea of statistics. Now, the horses might seem unbalanced. You might think, oh, a two or a three or an 11 or a 12, those horses are very unlikely to be rolled, which means they're very unlikely to win. Well, with the bonus movements, you'll start to see that they actually have a good chance. Now, yes, seven is always gonna have the best chance of winning. I believe it's like, 40, then 30, and then 20, and then like 10 or something like that. There is a difference, and that's kind of why you're choosing to make bets and why certain horses are worth more than other horses if they're able to win. Uh, and that's all part of the luck of the draw. Just like in regular horse racing, there's certain horses that are very, very likely to win. They're better breeds, they're better trained, they have a better rider. Uh, and that's kind of how this functions in this game as well. You never are going to be able to suspect and know every single specific race. I've been in tons of races with this game. I played in different parties scenarios, uh, and it's not too shocking when you see a blue or a, a, an orange horse win, and that does happen quite a bit, actually. So, uh, betting is going to be a little bit crazy, right? And that's kind of the idea of the game. This is a crazy game. You're constantly trying to make bets and place pieces before other players. Uh, it's a party game, uh, and it does it really, really well. If you like craps, if you like a little bit of like the idea of roulette craps, placing bets on boards, the, the Vegas aspect, uh, this is what this is kind of going to feel like. It's going to feel like a Vegas game. I could actually see this being something that people played in Vegas, provided the house had a way of making money, <laughs> um, because of the different odds and statistics of what's likely to happen, what's not likely to happen. You're going to have the exotic finishes, which change the game a bit, and then you're also going to have negative points. You're always going to have a better bet, which is always going to be on the right-hand side, so having the 2-3 horse win, for times nine is better than times seven, but if somebody already placed there, you'll still have an opportunity to place on the two other places, the eight and the seven, um, and all of them are gonna have a negative cost if you lose. So the more likely the bet, the less likely you're going to have to suffer, except for, of course, seven. Seven is a big a big challenge because it's very likely to win, so you're gonna have to suffer a lot if you lose. Uh, but these guys here, uh, they're high payoffs, high reward, high risk. And uh, the same is said for pretty much all of the top runners here. These are all times a certain amount, and uh, it's kind of betting on one specific horse so you have a more likelihood of winning if you see it already happening on the board and having that option to kind of determine who's farther along and how likely is it them for them to succeed being that farther uh, being that much farther along will make you be able to choose what bet bets work and just because you think the six is in front or the seven is in front it does not mean they're going to stay in front it can change yeah, four different races, each one you clean up and just rinse and repeat and you play up to the four. You can play more races if you want, but there's only, I think, five exotic finish cards that stand, so maybe you just wanna run four and then play again. It's, it's fun. I actually really, really enjoyed this game. I, I, I like games that are quick, are simple, are games I can throw, throw together in parties and I can just show them how that works. The most complicated aspect of the game is the board, trying to explain the difference between winning, placing, and showing. First, first, second, first, second, third. And then the roulette pieces, how being able to read as well. Like when you're playing with nine players, sitting across the board, Grandpa was going to have a harder time reading some of these exotic finishes or some of these prop bets. So he mainly played on the roulette and of course the main show board uh, and, and that can happen as well being uh, a large group of people mm, I think this would be a really cool game too with a huge mat and throwing down big chips <laughs> like you would see at a convention because it's a lot of fun this is one of those games that I think is going to stand for a long time 
in party group scenarios. This is one I can see a lot of my friends playing at uh, drinking game nights. So they're gonna be finding a way to make it work. I, I enjoy this game. Uh, this is something I think most people who see this game and understand what it is are either going to like it or dislike it. Do you like party games with a ton of luck and risk and reward? Then this is for you. If you want something deep in strategy, complex and thoughtful, this is not going to be for you. It's a very straightforward uh, yes or no type of an option here. Component quality, artwork, eh, so it's, it looks, the artwork for the box is beautiful and you have the nice exotic finish and VIP cards, but for the most part it has the Vegas experience. There's not a huge amount of art in the game. And the, the stylization, the graphic design works really well. It's really formulaic and easy to understand where you place your pieces. The tokens, I, I wish they were nicer quality. I think these are, these are not, they're not bad quality for the placing of the bets, uh, but because I wanted better quality, I don't have the original bet chips anymore. I'm just using my poker chips for getting money because it's all it is anyway, it's just poker chips. And they're basically the same quality as these. So if you're wondering what you're gonna get in the game, it'll be these tokens, but they'll be in chip, they'll be in like you know, cardboard chipboard fashion and you'll be able to get money that way. It has the denominations as opposed to mine that don't. I just kind of make it my own. And of course you can change up the dice if you want. They're pretty basic generic dice, but that's kind of what you're gonna get in a Vegas scenario anyway. So it does a good job of that. Overall, this is a solid game. This is a lot of fun. I'll be keeping this game for a very long time. Probably one of the um, best party games I have played this year. And I think I'll be uh, savoring this one for a, a while to come because I think pretty much my entire family enjoyed this game and it's something that they, I can get them to play in any group scenario. And that's a, a rare thing for having a game that plays nine players that isn't a trader deduction game. Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Ready, Set, Bet. If you'd like to pick up the game, there's a link in the description and don't forget there is an app and that app is really wonderful if you don't want to have somebody trying to constantly use their voice and roll the dice. You can also check out the website, unfilteredgamer.com, blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter lists, and more. Our live streams every Sunday at uh, 6.30 p.m. PST and and hopefully Wednesdays when I get my new PC so we can actually play some gaming streams. You can also go ahead and check out this video and the rest of our videos here on YouTube. Not this video, very honest video. But the rest of our videos on YouTube, you can like, comment, and subscribe. Hit that subscribe button, the bell notification. It does help us out greatly. Allows us to make more content. Shows people that you still care about little old unfiltered gamer teaching you about different types of games. That's pretty much all I got for you guys. And as always, I look forward to readying, setting, and betting with you next time. Are those any of those words? Betting. Betty. No, I said bettying. Oh, it's not I, a word. I